Hey everybody, welcome to Modern Music Studio and all things Ableton. Um, in this short video, I'm just going to go through kind of all the basics of Ableton's layout and kind of just get you prepared for getting started on your first song or beat. So before we begin, I just want to point out a quick, pretty helpful tip. Down in this bottom left, we have a circle with an arrow in it. If you click that, um, it opens up this little box, which is called the info view. Meaning, whenever you hover your mouse over a certain aspect or parameter or anything you can kind of click, you'll notice that that box will display information about what you're hovering your mouse over. So for example, I'm on top of the pause button in Ableton, and if you look down at the box, it'll say the stop button. Click to stop playback. And if you go over the play button, this green button right here, um, you'll notice the box says click or play button, click to start playback. So this can be super useful if you're new and just kind of wanting to learn how um, all these different buttons work. So we're just going to dive into it right now. Um, when you first open up Ableton, it should look pretty similar to this. Uh, you will notice right away that I have five tracks as opposed to four. That's only because right now I'm using one of these tracks so that I can plug my mic in and talk to you guys. The other thing that might look a little different is this pink uh, box that's around stuff right now. This is just my MIDI controller. Whenever you hook up any type of MIDI to Ableton, it's going to show this box. So. Um, cruising along, I'm going to start up at the top here and go through a bunch of these buttons. Some of them are more important than others, and we'll probably end up going more and more into the more advanced buttons later on in the series. So we're going to start off by ignoring this EXT button. Um, we're not really going to be using it for a while. But moving to the right, we have this tap button. This is your tap tempo. So say you have a beat playing and you're trying to figure out the tempo of that beat, a good way to do it is you just tap on this button to the uh, tempo of the beat and it'll set your BPM to that. For example, we can go one, two, three, four, and I've set it at 101. For now, I'm just gonna stay at 120. So this is your tempo. Um, we'll go more into these two buttons later. They're not necessarily important right now. Right here, the 4-4, four, four, this is your time signature. Um, you can go up to 10-4, maybe 6-8 if you're trying to get uh, maybe jazzy or something. But uh, for now, we're just going to go 4-4, four, four, meaning you have four beats per measure. Uh, just to the right of that, we have these two little circles. This is your metronome, so if you turn that on, it's in a light up yellow, and if you hit play, you should be able to hear the metronome. Um, oops, I have to turn this off. So now you can hear the metronome. Um, in that, you can go in and change it to, uh, you can have it hit every half note, you can go triplets, um, you can also change the sound of it, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also use a count in, so if you hit record, it will count, say, one bar, and then it will start recording. So I'm going to turn that off for now. This right here, this is um, more for launching. So say you have a bunch of clips in here that you want to play. Um, you can choose, like, do you want it to launch every bar, every quarter bar, etc. So we'll go more into that later. Moving to this center section right here. <clears throat> Um, this is kind of a the transport, if you will, for Ableton. And I'm going to start off with this button right here. This button is the follow feature. So if you're over here in session view, um, which is where you're probably going to end up spending most of your time, if you go ahead and zoom in, um, hit play, you'll notice you have this little bar that's kind of just going across the screen. Now if you hit this button, you'll notice now the screen is following the bar. This is super helpful when you're just trying to see where things are at within your session. To the right, we have your uh, kind of counter. This tells you where you are in the track right now. So if you notice, we're kind of around 38 measures. I'm going to click over here, and now we're at the beginning, 1, 1, 1. Uh, moving along again, we have this triangle. This is your play button. If you click it, Ableton will start to play. 
vice versa, you can just hit the space bar and that's your pause and play. This is your stop button, the big square, and then you have your record button. This stuff right here, this is not super important until a little later on, but these are all different record features. Um, kind of the same over here, this is your punch in, um, meaning you hit play and then wherever you set these two things is where the recording will start and then stop. And you turn these on to do that. In the middle you have this arrow with a circle kind of thing going around it. This is your loop button, meaning um, you can set a specific spot for Ableton to loop and it'll just play that spot over and over and over again. That is super helpful when say you're recording something or you're working on a mix. But for now we're not going to mess with that. Coming over to the right, these things will become very important later on, but you have draw mode which is a, um, a feature for kind of automation and stuff. You have your keyboard mode. Um, this just enables your computer keyboard to be a, um, a keyboard, essentially like a piano keyboard. Um, this button, we won't go into the key in MIDI. These are mapping things and that'll become more important later on when you're using a MIDI controller or something similar. This 3% right here, this is telling you how much um, CPU that your computer is currently using. Right now I don't have any effects or any um, instruments turned on, so my CPU is pretty low. You want to try and keep this as low as possible, though it will get pretty high sometimes um, the more tracks you add in. Now this D, this is like when that lights up it will turn red, that means you have a disk overload. And that's pretty much just when there's so much going on that Ableton and your computer cannot keep up. And you will notice your songs will start to sound very glitchy and just not good. So moving along, we've gone through the top. Now I want to go through uh, kind of these tracks right here really quick. So I'm going to start with the MIDI track. Um, MIDI is uh, software instruments. So you'll notice you when you have Ableton, um, you can drag and drop certain instruments into it, such as Operator, one of my favorites, and now the MIDI track has become a software instrument. And if you have this turned on, you can go in and actually play it. Um, yeah. And the other is an audio track. That is currently what I am on right now. Audio is used for recording. Um, you can only record audio onto a track, but you can record MIDI into an audio track, and we'll go into that later on. So, um, cruising in, I'm actually going to go over this arrow right here. This is your drop down menu, it shows you everything you need, such as like effects, instruments, um, samples that you may have, and third party plugins that you'll eventually kind of start downloading the more and more you get into uh, producing and recording. Then down here you have your packs. This is uh, stuff that comes with Ableton. Unfortunately you do have to buy it, but if it's grayed out that means you don't currently have it connected to Ableton. If it's black that means you can go in and actually use them. Um, and that's pretty much all it is over here, but we'll come back to this. So with um, all of these tracks, you're going to have a kind of clip view. You're going to have your pause button over here. This is to pause any clips that are currently playing in the track, not the entire uh, session. This will stop the session. This will stop the track itself. Going down, you have this section that looks a little more intimidating. This is just your input and output section and we'll go into that more on the recording video that I will do. Cruising down you have these um, buttons with the numbers in it. The number just tells you what number track you're on. So this is my second track, so the number is 2. Um, when it is lit up yellow, that means the track is on. When it is turned off, that means the track is off. Going down you have this S button, this means solo. Um, when you hit the solo button, all the other tracks are turned off and you just hear the um, track that you have soloed. 
Below it, we have a record button, record enable. So if this button is lit up, um, when you hit record, you'll notice that I am now recording. If this button is not clicked, I'm not recording when I hit play. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to over record over things that you've recorded and got right. Um, luckily, there is command Z in Ableton, which is just the undo function. So you can kind of go back in time if you mess up. Um, <clears throat> going through this, you'll notice that my audio tracks have sends on them. The MIDI does not right now because I don't have any effects on them, so they're not really um, doing anything. These sends, though, are things that will send to your return tracks over here. They are separate from your actual audio and MIDI tracks, but you'll notice it says reverb and delay. And these are things where you just set up an effect or something on them, and then you can send signal from your tracks over here and then um, your signal will be going through the effects on that track and you can then control the volume um, cruising down um, the MIDI tracks do not have this right now because there's no instrument but this uh, arrow with the meter on it this is your volume for the track so you'll notice as I turn it down I'm gonna get quieter and then as I turn it up I'm gonna get louder and that's pretty much the lowdown for how all of these work. And again, as we kind of cruise through, these will kind of start to make more and more sense. You can turn on and off viewing any of this stuff over here on the far right using these um, kind of five or six little buttons you can click. So say you don't want to see your input and output section, you just click the I.O and it'll make it go away and make Ableton a little less uh, intense looking. Same with your send and returns. So now we're just looking at our tracks with the on off and your volume control. Um, you'll notice right now uh, we have this drop audio effects here. If you don't want to see that, you just simply hover your um, mouse over this little section till it turns into this symbol and then you just double click. So now you have a very clean looking Ableton and not too overwhelming. This view right here is called Clip Launch View and um, as you build sessions, you'll notice clips will start to appear in here. Um, I'll do a little demo really quick. I'm gonna record myself right here, maybe beatboxing or something. Pause it. So now I have this clip and I can hit play. When you have these playing, they're naturally set to looping. So they're just going to keep playing over and over again. Now the other view in Ableton is called session view. And again, I mentioned earlier, this is where you're going to spend most of your time. This is kind of how you're going to build your tracks. You get a timeline view of how your song is uh, played out. Um, but for now, that's kind of the overview of most of the features within Ableton, just to kind of get you started and rocking out. Thanks for tuning in and talk to you next lesson.